Those governments, they sure do get up to a lot of shenanigans when our backs are turned. Sometimes I wonder if us little people are better off not knowing their crazy plans for all of us, cause sometimes there's a lot of strange and scary projects that just might make you think twice about whether they have our best intentions at heart at all. From the secret river building project in Africa to the Pentagon's studies into aliens, here's the 20 most secret projects governments don't want you knowing about at all. <sighs> Number 20. Great Man-Made River in Libya In the 1950s, oil drilling in the Al Kufra area of Libya's southeastern desert turned up water for the very first time. Analysis later showed that this find was part of the Nubian sandstone aquifier system, a huge reservoir of fossil water that's anywhere from 10,000 to a million years old. The water got into the sandstone before the end of the last ice age, when the Saharan region had a temperate climate. At first, the Libyan government planned to set up large-scale agricultural products in the desert where the water was found. However, these plans changed in the early 1980s, and plans were made for a huge network of pipelines to the coast, and much of this was kept secret so Western powers wouldn't come in and try and take it. Some Libyan officials have said that the underground reservoirs could keep supplying water for thousands of years because of how big they are. Critics say that these claims are way too optimistic, and some say that the GMR might not even last until the end of the 21st century. But even if it did end that soon, this would still be a valuable resource for the country. Before we go on, like this video, smash that subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. The Pentagon does have a UFO program. The Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, or AATIP, is a $22 million U.S. government program that looked into UFOs. Yep, and it's for real. It looked into a wide range of strange things, such as the physical effects of unknown aerial phenomena, or UAPs as they're officially known, and the biological effects of UAP encounters on living things. It also mentions several real UAP incidents, such as violations of restricted airspace near a nuclear weapons facility and said that Utah's famous Skinwalker Ranch is a possible laboratory for studying other things, like literal aliens. Bigelow Airspace Advanced Space Studies, aka BASS, was given a contract by AATIP to create a 494-page report about alleged UFO sightings all around the world over several decades. This so-called 10-month report hasn't been released to the public, but it is full of plans and in-depth analysis of unexplained aerial phenomena. One of the former Bass contractors said that the Bass report was just a small part of the materials given to the defense intelligence, and the real number of UAP sightings could be truly enormous. Number 18. The FBI was tracking Bigfoot. There are stories all over the world about big beasts that look like man-apes. Since the 1950s, this kind of cryptid has been called Bigfoot in the US, and the FBI has had a file on him since 1976. In that same year, director Peter Byrne of the Bigfoot Information Center and Exhibition in the Dales, Oregon, sent the FBI about 15 hairs attached to a small piece of skin. Brian wrote that his group didn't know what kind of animal it came from and hoped that the FBI would look at it. He also wanted to know if the FBI had ever looked at hair that was thought to be from Bigfoot, and if so, what did they find? Also, this happened after Roger Patterson and Robert Gimlin released their famous Bigfoot video from Northern California in 1967. It's important to remember that logger Ray L. Wallace found out in 2002 that the evidence that started the Bigfoot craze, a trail of big footprints found in the same area in 1958, was just a practical joke. And many people think that the Bigfoot in the Patterson Gimlin film was also just a prankster dressed up in a costume. But Byron has always thought that the video was real, and the FBI aren't taking any chances. Number 17. The Playing Card Escape There's a long history between US troops and playing cards. During deployment, a lot of time is spent killing time until the action starts, and card games have been the number one way to do that for a long time. 
In World War I, a special really cheap deck was made so soldiers could easily buy one to take to the battlefields. During World War II, British and American intelligence agencies worked to make playing cards that came apart when a card got wet. The maps secretly spawn inside and help down pilots and soldiers who had been captured find their way back to the Allied lands. Once the map pieces were shown, it was just a matter of putting the cards together in the right order to see the whole map layout. The Red Cross sent special Christmas packages to prisoners of war in Europe that included a deck of playing cards, among other things. Cards were common among the troops, so the Nazi camp guards didn't think anything of them. People say that these cards helped at least 32 people escape from the Kolditz castle and led to 316 attempts to escape. No one knows for sure how many decks were made, but the International Spy Museum in Washington, D.C. has only two decks that are still around today. Number 16. The CIA built a robot dragonfly. At the end of December of 2003, the CIA showed off many spy tools that had never been seen before at its own museum near Washington. There was a listening device that looked like tiger poop and tracked troop movements in Vietnam. There was also a robot fish that took water samples near hidden nuclear plants. And then there was a tiny dragonfly that showed up. At first glance, this Cold War artifact from the 1970s looked like a common green darner or maybe a blue-faced dragonfly, since its face, forewings, and thorax were all in the right place. But if you look closer, you'll see that this small bug isn't really a bug at all. It's an insect thropper, a bug-sized spy that's our first big step into the complex world of insect robots. At a time when the microprocessor was a new idea, it was an amazing accomplishment. Now, 16 years after its first public appearance, and almost 50 years after its first flight, the CIA has released documents that show every little detail of how they made such a cool micro-robot. Retro-reflectors are tiny glass beads that send laser light, in this case, a laser beam, back to where it came from. Any movement in the glass can change how far this laser beam travels after it's been reflected. The CIA can then look at the returned beam and try to recreate the vibrations that shook it. This is a way to get a sound out of a light source. In practice, those retro reflectors were used as a remote microphone to listen in on any conversation. Number 15. The military's attempt at weaponizing lightning. The CIA also once thought that lightning could be used as a weapon. In the late 1960s, an unnamed scientist suggested that the service use lightning strikes as weapons that could leave little or no evidence, making it hard to point the finger at the U.S. government for their assassinations. Even though the CIA has always been interested in secret weapons, they never fully developed this particular weapon, even though they did prove that it worked. It meant using thin metal wires as artificial leaders to make discharges happen where and when we wanted them to. The wires, which were only a few thousands of an inch in diameter, would be sent into the air by planes or rockets. Then when lightning struck, it'd be drawn to the metal wire and then hit the ground where the wire ended. The idea seems to be that the wire would be close enough for 300 million volts of electricity to kill whoever the CIA wanted to kill at the time. But it turned out that using lightning as a weapon is a bad idea for a number of reasons. The CIA could only use it during lightning storms, and the lightning attracting wire would have to stay close enough to the target to be deadly. For the assassination to happen, everything would have to go just right. But it's still pretty terrifying that the government is that clever, and they're trying to figure out ways of killing people without anyone being able to tell who did it. Number 14. The Pentagon is in possession of off-world vehicles. Okay, so the U.S. government has been saying different things about its official role in UFO research for a very long time. A government program looked into UAVs and other strange things that happened in the sky for a while in the 2000s, but funding ran out in 2012, they claim anyway. Here's the part you probably expected. Many people say that it's still going on to this day. Harry Raid, a former Nevada senator who helped fund the first UFO program, told the New York Times that he thinks the government is creating a task force to gain knowledge and insight into the nature and origins of UAPs, and that recovered materials should be studied. Alien tech, here we come. Anyone ever read that book Time Traders? I'm getting like that story vibes. Number 13. Lost Plutonium in the Himalayas. The recent deadly floods in India's Himalaya mountains are being blamed on a stash of plutonium that was left there decades ago. The CIA lost the plutonium back in the 1960s. 
It was supposed to power sensors that would record Chinese nuclear tests. Villagers in the area think that the plutonium is to blame for floods that have killed a lot of people. In 1964, at the Lop Nur testing site in western China, the People's Republic of China tested its first nuclear bomb. It was called Operation 59-6, and it was a 22 kiloton nuclear bomb that was about 50% stronger than the bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima. The CIA really needed information about China's nuclear weapons, but Lopner was hundreds of miles away from any friendly country. The Indian Himalayas were the closest place the CIA could get, so it asked the Indian government if it could work with it on a joint intelligence operation. India agreed, as it had just fought a short war with China two years before. In 1965, a team team of Indian and American spies went to the Himalayas to put the device in place. The power for the sensor came from a radio thermal generator, which turned the heat from decaying nuclear isotopes into electricity. The group of climbers tried to put the device on the Indian mountain Nanda Devi. Heavy snowfall and falling oxygen levels forced the team to store the device away without installing it. They planned to come back the next year to try again, and in fact, when the team went back to the site, the sensor and power source were gone, and no one was ever able to find it. Whoops! And now it may be melting ice onto poor villagers below. Number 12. U.S. Navy Dolphins and Sea Lions to Serve as Marine Guardians of U.S. Naval Base In the 1950s, the U.S. Navy thought that dolphins would make good models for designing torpedoes. But in the end, they actually used them for something very different. By 1967, the program, which is now called the Navy Marine Mammal Program, was top secret, and its budget was hidden as a black ops program. In the decades that followed, not much is known about the program, but training bases were set up in San Diego and Hawaii. In the 1990s, people pushed for more information about the program's activities to be made public. At this point, it was said that 140 animals had been made to be a part of the program. Five teams of marine mammals can be sent anywhere in the world at any time. These teams are made up of mostly bottlenose dolphins and sea lions. Within 72 hours, the animals and the people who take care of them can be launched from ships, planes, or vehicles on land. And here comes the catch. In the past few years, Navy marine mammals have been used to find mines and detonate them, usually at the cost of their own lives. What the hell is wrong with us? Number 11. The Unknown Location of a Russian Anti-Aircraft Missile in June of 2020, Libyan forces sold the United States a Panzer S-1, which is Russia's most advanced anti-aircraft missile. This marked a big win for the U.S. intelligence community. The Panzer S-1 is an air defense system that's mounted on the back of a military truck. It works at low altitudes. It was recently used in war zones in Libya and Syria. The U.S. Air Force took the weapon out of the country and moved it to a secret place. In June of 2020, the secret U.S. mission to Libya took place. The United Arab Emirates, in fact, brought the Panzer from Russia and gave it to the Libyan government. After that, it was abandoned and then captured by a local Libyan militia. In the end, Libyan government forces got the system back and took it to a base where Turkish military forces were stationed, who were then able to get it into U.S. hands where, no doubt, it will be analyzed with huge interest. Number 10. The U.S. military once funded a flying saucer program. In the mid-1950s, a Canadian aviation company started working on a disc-shaped aircraft for the U.S. military. The details of the project were kept secret, but the project itself was known about in some circles. In the decades since the program was canceled in 1961, aviation fans and UFO researchers have found technical papers written near the end of America's flying saucer experiment. But the document that convinced the government to invest in a military flying disc has been lost. This recently found report gives details that were not known before about how aviation engineers tried to use what were then cutting-edge ideas in aerodynamics to make their unlikely creation fly. Even though Arvo's saucer never flew successfully, many of these same technologies are used in some of the most advanced planes in use today. Number 9. The Air Force Built a Secret Fighter Jet 
In 2020, the U.S. Air Force said it had designed, built, and tested a new prototype fighter jet, totally in secret. We don't know much about the fighter, but it's already been flown and broken records, they tell us. The Air Force now has to think about whether it'll buy the new fighter, even though it is having trouble getting everything from bombers to intercontinental ballistic missiles at the moment. The new fighter was developed by the Air Force as part of its Next Generation Air Dominance Program. The goal of this program is to build a plane that'll help the Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor, or even just take its place. We don't know which defense contractor made the new jet's design and prototype, but it's probably one of the big aerospace companies. Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, and Boeing. We have no idea where it came from or where it is now, and we also have no idea how many prototypes they made. We don't know what it looks like, we don't know what it's called, how fast it flies, how well it can turn, or if it has any special abilities. We don't know anything about it. But for now, the most interesting, and maybe even revolutionary thing about the NGAD is that the Air Force designed and built it in just one single year. Since the end of World War II, there's never been such fast weapons development as today. In fact, normally as technology gets more complicated, fighters take longer and cost more to make. But suddenly the output is huge and very fast. Hmm. I'll let you uh, draw your own conclusion there. Number 8. The Cold War Era's Constant Peg Program during the Cold War, the race for military supremacy took many strange turns. One of the strangest was America's secret plan to buy Soviet fighter jets. The MIG jets were flown by U.S. Air Force pilots as part of the secret program called Constant Peg. The goal was to get U.S. pilots used to what would have been their main enemy in World War III. I like how they said would have been. That's that's optimistic. The U.S. intelligence community went on a secret shopping spree in the 1960s. The CIA bought or rented Soviet fighter planes from a number of different countries. Most of the time, these planes came from defecting pilots, pilots who were captured, or even the Soviet Union itself. The Soviet planes were then given to the U.S. Air Force, which translated any instruction manuals and put some of the best pilots in charge of flying the strange planes. It's like Independence Day when they had the fighter pilots try and fly the UFOs. The small fleet of MIGs was put together by the 4477th Testing and Evaluation Squadron. The Red Eagles of the 4477th flew out of Groom Lake aka Area 51 Nevada, which was home at the time to the F-117A Stealth Fighter, another top secret Air Force program at the time. Once the pilots learned how to fly their Eastern Bloc planes well, they were supposed to go up against American fighter pilots in the front lines. The goal was to give Americans a chance to see the real thing in action with all the pros and cons. And then all they had to do is figure out how to beat them. Number 7. The Air Force's Unmanned Space Plane the head of a Russian defense company recently said that the unmanned X-37B space plane used by the U.S. Air Force is a secret space bomber that can drop nuclear bombs from orbit. But is this true? Just as a reminder, the Boeing X-37B is made to stay in orbit for months and carry out secret missions for the U.S. military space program. The spacecraft works both in and out of the atmosphere, but the way it works is a little different in each case. In May of 2020, the X-37B started its sixth mission, which was to test a solar power system that beams energy to Earth with a laser. Before that, it was famous for staying in space for a record 780 days. It came back down to Earth in October of 2019 after a mission that included Air Force Research Laboratory experiments and a ride for small satellites, according to a press release from the Air Force. Even though there are different designs for space planes like the Sierra Nevada Dream Chaser and the Virgin Galactic Unity, only the Unity has ever actually flown into space. Both planes are used for business and privately owned. The U.S. hasn't said anything about building a fleet of eight spacecraft that could be a mix of any of the three designs. So, is the X-37B a bomber that can drop nukes? Well, no, it's not. But that isn't to say that it couldn't happen. Although, I also have to point out Neil deGrasse Tyson's point about this, which is, we can already deliver nuclear payloads from the Earth to anywhere else on Earth. So there isn't really an inherent advantage to dropping a nuke from space instead. Number 6. Operation Gladio After World War II, many NATO members were afraid of the Soviet Union's power and possible invasions. So the countries worked with the CIA to make paramilitary groups that would stay in other nations after the possible war was over. 
Project Gladio was the name for these networks. Members hid weapons, made plans for how to get out of the country, and found members in other countries. People didn't know much about them until they heard about a group in Italy who were getting a little out of control. Reports said that Gladio members knew in advance about a number of violent terror attacks on Italian soil, but did nothing to stop them. While the US government acknowledged their network in Italy, they denied having any direct connection to heinous acts like these. During the Cold War, anti-communist armed groups engaged in attacks on left-wing parties with torture, terror attacks, and massacres in countries like Italy. And then retaliation attacks followed in a very tense time in the country. These years are known to Italians as the years of lead, as in bullets. People argue about what part the CIA and other intelligence agencies played in Gladio, how much they did during the Cold War, and if they had anything to do with terrorist attacks in Italy during the years of lead. In 1990, the European Parliament passed a resolution that said military secret services in some member states were indeed involved in terrorism and other serious crimes, whether or not their bosses knew about it. Number 5. The A-12 Oxcart Aircraft Tested at Area 51 the United States developed the A-12 Oxcart plane in 1963. It was made for reconnaissance missions, especially those at high altitudes that required quick turning. The A-12 was kept at Area 51 while it was being planned, built, and tested. It was thought to be the best reconnaissance plane until 1968, when the government chose the SR-71 instead because it could fly way further. From 1962 to 1964, the A-12 was in production, and from 1963 to 1968 it was flown. It was the ancestor of the SR-71 Blackbird, a slightly longer version that could carry more fuel and cameras. The A-12 started flying missions in 1967. and its last flight was in May of 1968, and both the program and the plane were taken out of service in June of that year. The program was made public around the middle of the 1990s. The first person to die because of the Oxcart program happened on January 5th, 1967, when Article 125 crashed. CIA pilot Walter Ray was killed when the plane ran out of fuel on the way down to the test site. No exact reason could be found for why the plane went down, but it was thought that a mistake in measuring the fuel led to the plane running out of fuel, and the engine catching on fire 67 miles from the base. Ray was able to get out of the plane, but he couldn't get out of his ejector seat, and he died when it hit the ground. Number 4. Project Blue Book Due to a series of flying saucer sightings in 1947, the Air Force started a campaign to figure out what was going on with UFOs. This project was known as Project Blue Book. It put together another project called SIGN to look into reports of UFOs in a secret way. Some researchers say that one of SIGN's supposed final reports, which is called the Estimate of the Situation, openly supported the idea that flying saucers came from other planets. Even though the report has never been made public and is probably more myth than reality, most people who are interested in UFOs think that SIGN was shut down and replaced with the short-lived Project Grudge in 1949 to try and actively disprove UFOs. UFO sightings. The Air Force also shut down Grudge in 1951, saying that UFOs were fakes and mistakes, but it did say that about 23% of the cases it looked into couldn't be explained. Number 3. The Hazardous Devices School in Alabama the FBI has a huge campus in the woods of Alabama, and it's almost entirely used to locate and get rid of explosive materials and devices. They see a lot of explosions every day, so you don't have to. The Rocket City Hotel isn't a real hotel. The FBI built the strip mall in 2004. It's on the campus of its Hazardous Devices School, which is part of the Redstone Arsenal, a 38,000-acre U.S. Army facility in Huntsville. And it's also home to the Pentagon's Missile Defense Agency, NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center, and the Army's Aviation and Missile Command. As you walk around the campus, big explosions come from far away every few hours. The trainees learn how to approach explosive materials, find them, defuse them, and keep people safe in general. In 2014, improvised explosive devices killed 42,627 people around the world. 
In 2013, there were 172 IEDs that were found in just the United States in just six months. Many of these devices are diffused without any trouble by people like the bomb techs in Huntsville. These are young people who join the field because they want to do something helpful. All of these techs train at Huntsville. There's about 3,100 of them spread out equally over 466 squads, and they do a great and very dangerous job. Number two. There are no aliens inside of Area 51. Area 51 is a U.S. Air Force base at Groom Lake. It's in the middle of the desert in southern Nevada. It's become famous because of rumors that it's got something to do with UFOs, maybe even aliens themselves. There are rumors about the base that say it's used to test alien technology found at supposed crash sites like the famous one in Roswell, New Mexico. This is because the base was kept secret for a long time, and it's still not open to the general public. It's because of this that this military installation that doesn't look like much has has become a big part of modern mythology and urban legends of the 20th century, having a huge impact on both media and pop culture. The Nevada Test and Training Range and the base are now part of the Nevada National Security Site. The CIA calls it the Groom Lake and Homey Airport. Since 2018, you can see the base on Google Maps. Before 2018, satellite images of the site were very limited. In 2013, the US military finally admitted that there was a place called Area 51. This happened after the National Security Archive at George Washington University got a secret CIA document about the U-2 spy plane's history. But the fact that it exists doesn't mean that you should go to the base. There's still good reasons for the government and the military to keep the activities of the base secret. And if you just show up unannounced, it might be you who's next in line for an autopsy. Number 1. Project Sunshine – Steel Corpses in the 1950s, the federal government set up a worldwide network to secretly collect tissue samples from more than 900 corpses. This was done to study the effects of nuclear weapon tests. The body snatching happened in secret, without the next of kin's permission or even knowledge. More than 1,500 samples were taken, but only 500 were tested. Many of the 1,500 sample cadavers were babies and young children who were taken from places like Australia and Europe without their parents' permission or knowledge. An investigation was started after a British newspaper said that British scientists had taken children's bodies from hospitals and sent their body parts to the US. A British mother said that her stillborn baby's legs were cut off by British doctors and she wasn't allowed to dress the baby for the funeral so she wouldn't find out what happened. In 1994, President Bill Clinton set up a group to look into these government secrets so they wouldn't stay hidden. The result was a 900-page report that said the actions taken during during Project Sunshine were unethical and illegal. Yeah, that would be one way of putting it. Stealing baby corpses from grieving mothers and allied nations? That's definitely unethical. What other secret projects do you think the government's undertaking? Should we trust the government always, or are conspiracy theories sometimes right? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.